welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at four games here on Thursday night. Not that much to choose from, but we do have a couple game videos for you and our player props. As always, in this video, we're taking a look at the Clips. They are in Golden State taking on those dubs. Uh, Also have another game in the Eastern Conference up for you guys and those player props. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Also want you to head to thelines.com. You can check out all of our great written content up there as the NBA is in full swing up there. And use that odds finder tool that we have for you guys. Make sure you're getting the best odds available to you from all those U.S. sports books giving you guys bets this season. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into this little four-game slate and then talk about dubs and clips. Yeah, and there's some big injuries to monitor, which is why we're talking about these two games in specific. Um, that first one being Toronto minus two at Washington. And then you got Philly plus four at Dallas and Bede sat last night and maybe it's in preparation to play tonight. Maybe he misses another game, so that could certainly affect that and then the Pacers are minus five at the Spurs with Halliburton legitimately questionable Uh, Spurs actually won a game for the first time in in weeks but otherwise uh, you'd expect them to to lose another one and then this game (laughs) yeah the Clippers minus three and a half at the Warriors total is 232 and that is where I look first Um, maybe I'm scarred by thinking the Clippers were going to continue their under ways after adding Russ Westbrook last Friday. And they had that ridiculous game at Sacramento. Um, and, and now, yeah, I'm just seeing a faster paced team um, that is going to push the pace and that the Warriors are happy to play at that type of pace at home. I know their last three home games have gone under. It was against Portland on a back-to-back with Lillard due for some regression. It was against Houston and Minnesota. Um, not at all impressed by those offenses. You look back at the previous four. I mean, they did go under with the Lakers, but you know, Washington, OKC, these games were going way over. Um, and it's just, I, I, I still think the Clippers are an extremely efficient offense, even though in this small sample size, the last two games with Russ, they've struggled a bit. I mean, 116 offensive rating in general with, with him, but a 104 pace, and they're scoring 133 a game. That is skewed, yes, by the Sacramento game. They're scoring 112 in the other two. Uh, But in regulation against Denver, we're talking about a 239 total in Denver. Uh, I actually have more respect for what Denver can do defensively than the Warriors at home. And and I, I know there's some really notable splits on both sides of the ball for the Warriors, but they also score more at home. They're also, yeah, they they're far more... Productive, they are willing to push the pace. Um, even at a 96 pace, the last time these teams met, we totaled 258. Uh, the Clippers, not, 129 defensive rating. The Warriors, 139. No Andrew Wiggins. That's going to hurt your defense against Kawhi, who is still you know, scoring at such a ridiculous clip. 132 offensive rating, 33 points per game in three with Russ. So it's not like he's necessarily mucking up what Kawhi can do. PG also 27 points per game, shooting 40% from three. It's a, it's a little bit of a growing process for, for T. T. Lou and, and the gang to integrate Westbrook because he does like to have the ball in his hands and, and push the pace. But I think they'll continue to figure it out. Uh, I'm not really interested in, in saying they're going to figure it out and get the win here. Uh, I think I'd be a little more interested in the Warriors as underdogs at home. But I actually like the over here. And uh, I, I, more than anything, and I know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna disagree with me here. So let's hear the counterpoint. Yep. Yeah, there's plenty of counterpoints. One, there's two quick ones uh, to just a quick couple corrections to what you were saying. They did go to overtime, the Clippers versus Denver in that game that reached 258. That's what I said. Um, it was 239 before overtime. It was. I was gonna mention that as well, but you got to it first. <laughs> and then the other thing I would mention is in those games you were talking about for the Dubs, where they're just going over, you know, and and, and those games are going in the 250s and 60s. Uh, a man named Wardell Stephen Curry was playing in those two games. Uh, so that helped them a ton. That was when also he didn't say that. that the last game was at LAC right before the break. No Steph. Right. right. But then before that, Washington and OKC going over. I'm just saying that was Steph as well. I think the thing that I'm talking about here and why I like it is I'm taking I'm just I'm just throwing that 
King's game in the trash, just crumpled up and gone. Like, I'm not concerned about it, right? So that fun anomaly that God gave us on a random February day in the NBA, fine. Like, we'll take it, but I'm not going to use it necessarily. I, I do agree the pace is faster. Look, it's Russ's... Russ Westbrook is in, is is a, a magnet. He he's a stronger gravitational pull than most NBA players. When he comes to your team, you're probably going to uh, resemble his style of play a lot more than before he got there. Um, which is the case of of Russ being here. Uh, that pace, like I said, throwing away that thir- that first game he played against the Kings, just the last two, 102 pace, uh, definitely faster. Seventh most uh, fast break points as opposed to uh, ninth fewest. Six most points off of turnovers as opposed to seventh fewest. Uh, their opponents are getting you know points off of their turnovers as well, which is what happens when you have Russ. They get more assists because Russ loves those stats, um, and they love you know, and they're getting to the free throw line a bit more because Russ loves to just run into people and, and get that going. The effect on on the rest of the team has been that the starting lineup that has been one of the best all season when Kawhi and Paul George are in there is now one of the worst. Uh, and I know it's a two game sample size, but that's what I'm going on. And I, I, we've been saying, why is Russell Westbrook coming to this team since before he got here, we were like, no, 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 no. And then they did it. And we're all just watching what we predicted happen. The, all the, the nerds that we, we all consider ourselves, whatever it, the, the five starters of this team now have the worst on off court rating of their, of anybody the, the the bench is back to being way better than the starters. Um, and the bench has been good all season, but when the, when the bench has to be better than the stars, it's because the clips don't have one of Kawhi or Paul George in. they have them both on the floor right now with Russ and they can't get better than a hundred offensive rating with most of the lineups that they try try with him and, and those two guys. So, um, you know, in this situation, the reason that I, I also like under is the dubs at home. And I believe in, in what they've been doing and not doing necessarily in their last few games. I haven't liked the offense at all. It's just clay, please bail us out. Um, and in, in the last, you know, or, or we're playing Houston. Um, that's basically the, the two options that you have here. Clay bail us out or we're playing Houston um, or Dante Di- DiVincenzo as well, try and, and help bail us out. But they've been winning on the strength of defense against, I agree, worse offenses. Um, but the fact that they're keeping a game with Portland <clears throat> that low as well is like, come on, man, like that team doesn't play D at all. And you're still, you know, you're, you're still giving up everything, you know, Dame shooting. He regressed, like you said, but like at the end of the day that this offense for, for the Clippers is so muddled uh, that I'm not really sure where they're supposed to be. Russ kind of gets in the way. Obviously, um, the defense at home for the Dubs is everything. It's much different uh, than when it's there on the road. 109 defensive rating at home versus the 127.7 on the road. This is all over their last 10 games and is pretty consistent for the whole season. They're giving up 53 percent from the field on the uh, at, uh, on the road versus at home. 46 percent, 44 percent from deep. They're giving up 29 free throws on the road right now. Like what? How every game on the road, you give up 29 free throws as opposed to 22 at home as well. So, you know, when they're home dogs four and oh against the spread, winning those games by an average of 10 points, covering the spread by like 13 points. Um, and they're oh and four to the over, uh, failing to cover that over by six and a half. I just think we 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 need to really focus on what the dubs do at home and, and focus on that they don't have Steph to help them get their offense going. Um, and obviously, Wiggs helps that as well. So, I, I just don't feel as confident and the ability for, for them to necessarily get the points up. And I do believe in their defense uh, and the ability to limit LAC tonight. I think you make a lot of great points, but I just Thank want you. to get petty and say you are incorrect. Steph did not play against OKC or Washington when the Dubs scored 141 and 135. That was right after he got injured again. Um, this is what you saw so your time the, doing while I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> they can definitely put up points without Steph Curry. I don't think that that's a huge concern. I, I just, yeah, I mean, and they scored 125 on Portland, did they not? Uh, I mean, so it, the, the Clippers' defense has not been good at all the last um, couple weeks. It's really just been a, a case of playing at a slow pace. And now they're both playing at a fast pace, and they're inefficient defensively and efficient offensively. So I think the potential is definitely there for a high-scoring game. I think, but I, I do think you make some good points about the, how the Dubs have to win. I know you're going to dive into the Jordan Poole under and player props. I think there's a strong correlation there where I think if they go over, it's going to be because pool has found his rhythm a little bit more because yeah, I can't just depend on clay to get his own shot. That's not necessarily his game. Uh, Look, I'm taking Kawhi and player props. We're going to talk about this game a lot in that one. And so if you don't want to take one side or the other here, the total or, or the, uh, the, the spread, then 
maybe we could just look at player props and, and have fun watching this late one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, neither of us even try to pick a winner. I, I don't feel confident betting uh, on the dubs, even, you know, just because even the games that they've won against lesser competition than the Clippers, they've really struggled to even do that, regardless of if they're at home or on the road. Um, I know some of those numbers, like their blowout against Portland, but I mean, they were down by like 15 points in double digits in both that game and the Minnesota Timberwolves game that once again, they needed like a barrage of threes, uh, you know, in, in the waning minutes of, of the, the second half to, to be able to even pull that game out and cover uh, after a while as well. So I, I just don't like what I'm seeing from them. But as I consistently say as well, I would not bet on a Westbrook Clippers team right now with your money. So that's all the time we have for you in this one. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along. Check out the other couple videos we have for you tonight. And until we see you next, happy betting.